Blend strings, an environment for computing with smooth functions. Before I begin, I want to tell you about Maple Transactions, which is an open access journal with no page charges. Go see that at mapletransactions.org. Um, this talk is dedicated to the memory of Peter Bidu. You can see a paper by Nick Trefathen and Peter Bidu at uh, the Maple Transactions uh, first issue on log lightning computation of capacity and range functions. And Peter's video abstract for that paper is pretty excellent, so have a look. See also the interview with the, author, with the authors in the same issue. Okay, my talk. What is this talk about? It's uh, what's a blend, which is a high order uh, two point Hermite interpolational polynomial. What's a blend string? A blend string is a smooth piecewise polynomial where the pieces are blends and the blends share derivative information on adjacent intervals. Blends can be evaluated in linear time. Blends are component wise backward stable numerically. Blends have decent Lebesgue constants, so that means that uh, they uh, don't amplify errors in the coefficients, at least not much. And blend strings can be integrated and differentiated accurately, which is a extremely useful uh, thing to do. And there are companion matrix pencils for blends, so we can do root finding with them. Here's some of my uh, relevant papers on this. Um, by the way, the slides are available on my website, rcorlos.github.io, and uh, downloading the slides give you all these links. So I wrote new code in Maple for all of this stuff, I wrote a Herm an Remit Obreshkov ODE solver. And the reason I did that was to evaluate uh, Matthew functions and modified Matthew functions to give me a spectrally convergent expansion for the flow of blood in an elliptic cross section blood vessel. And this solves the original model of equations. Code that I wrote uses blend strings and uses them to approximate the Matthew functions to arbitrary precision. Why? Why did I do that? That's very quixotic to write your own special purpose IVP solver. I did it because the Matthew equations have double eigenvalues and all of the codes I know of don't handle that well. Matthew functions are useful and interesting in and of themselves and so it's great. I wanted an independent method so that I could verify that the solutions were accurate and I needed complex parameters and I, the case of near circularity, you think that's the easy case because circular blood vessels in the normal model. But because the coordinate transformation is singular, that's actually very hard numerically and you need high precision. Paradoxical. Um, could there be other uses for blend strings? Mm, they might be interesting for efficient high accuracy solution for initial value problems or boundary value problems for what's called definite ODE or also called holonomic uh, ODE. These are differential equations for which Taylor series can be generated efficiently. Um, another use might be solving delay differential equations because we have this lovely quadrature formula. Uh, Ned Nedialkov and John Price have got code for uh, solving differential algebraic equations using very similar methods. And maybe some of the experimental features of this Maple code could influence future developments. To implement this, I first wrote uh, an efficient and numerically stable evaluator for the blends. And together with routines for manipulating them, you integrate, differentiate, root find, um, add them together, multiply them together, all that sort of stuff. Um, blend strings are just, you, you have um, an approximate on one piece and an, another approximate next door to it, and they share the derivative information in the, in the middle. So you wind up with piecewise polynomials on multiple pieces, but with a high degree of continuity at the, at the joins. There, this is analogous to cubic splines, but much smoother. And the approximations on each subinterval are grade m plus n plus 1, where m is the number of Taylor coefficients you know at one end, and n is the number of Taylor coefficients that you know at the other end. Normally, I take the both to be the same. Uh, and then you get, if they're both the same, they're both equal to m, then you get something that's actually m times differentiable throughout the whole uh, interval. Okay, 
what is a blend really? Um, suppose we know some Taylor coefficients of a function at two distinct points, say at z equals a and at z equals b. Then put z equals a plus s times b minus a, and now we have a unit variable s going from 0 to 1 that determines the line segment in the plane. Um, Hermite, 150 years ago, wrote down this lovely formula, which says that uh, h of s, the following polynomial, which is the sum from j equals zero of pj times a basis function, the jth basis function there, uh, plus the sum from j equals zero to n of qj times another basis function, which is the same as the first one, except it's got alternating signs in it. Uh, then you have the the, the, the jth Taylor coefficient at the left end is the pj, and the jth Taylor coefficient at the right end is the qj. And it's absolutely simple, straightforward. You have this two-line formula that gives you everything that you want to know. It call, I call it a blend, because two-point Hermite interpolational polynomials a little too hard to say. And it blends the Taylor series at either end together to give an approximation on the interval between. And it's a better approximation than either Taylor series alone, of course. Now, if you evaluate that naively, then you have to build those binomial coefficients and you've got double sums. So it's not clear that you can do this in uh, linear time. But if you write the uh, uh, polynomial, what I call double Horner form, then each of those basis functions is actually just one more term of the previous basis function. So you can generate them as you go while you do it and you can do the, the evaluation is uh, takes m plus n plus one flops. Uh, very easy to write down the algorithm to do that. Um, the neat thing, well, one of the neat things about it is that they are actually extremely good numerically. You look at those giant binomial coefficients in there, you think, oh, well, this is going to be numerically difficult. But in fact, it's fine. Um, I've used uh, the Horner implementation for degrees up to about a thousand and <laughs> uh, binomial 1000, 1000 choose 500 is ridiculously large. It over, almost overflows. It's fine. Um, and this is a surprise. You need to prove why that works. And the reason is that uh, the double Horner gives the exact value of a blend with Taylor coefficients changed by relatively small amounts. So pj times one plus theta j and qj times one plus cj, where each of those theta j's and cj's is less than three m plus n times the machine epsilon divided by one minus three m plus n times the uh, machine epsilon. And the proof uses the non-negativity of the s to some power times one minus s to the power on the interval. So it's actually a proof that is confined to that interval, 0 to 1. Um, it's not too bad if you're not far away from that interval, but it is uh, an important consideration if you're far away from that interval. And in particular, zero coefficients, pj equals 0 and qj equals 0, are not disturbed. So you preserve some qualitative features of the underlying, approximate, uh, underlying function. And it's a very strong backward stability result, which is comparable to some of those of uh, Alicia Smoktunovitz for the clenshaw curtis algorithm. She proved that uh, in particular for Chebyshev polynomials, you get the same uh, component-wise stability. And as I verbally said, gamma n is uh, n times the uh, unit Randoff divided by one minus n times the unit Randoff. And typically that, well, I <laughs> use uh, arbitrary precision for uh, computing, so I set digits equals 30 or 80 or whatever I want to do, but works just fine for ordinary double precision and very quickly as well. So here's a grade 1000 example. Um, oh, I use grade instead of degree because you specify the, the information on one side and the information on the other side. Well, it might be a constant function that you're specifying things for, so the degree might be quite a bit lower than the, than the degree of the uh, polynomials that you're using to approximate, but you say the grade. That's the usual polynomial, uh, matrix polynomial literature. It means degree at most. So here's a, a, a grade 1000 example, and I 
generated random coefficients to the left and random coefficients at the right. And I took 368 of them on the left and 631 of them on the right. And so the grade was 1,000. The red line is the theoretical bound, gamma 3m plus n. The blue dashed line is a you replace the, the 3m plus n with a square root of that. So just it's a crude random walk model for rounding errors. And you can see that that actually fits the little black dots, which are the actual backward error computed by the bidley Prager theorem, which is just the holder inequality. Great, so it's beautifully backward stable, and if you want to read the proof of that, and some people in, the, in this audience would actually be interested in the details, uh, and I'm happy to have people check them, they're in the Maple Transactions paper. The next part is, okay, we have good backward error, what about the forward error that results from that backward error? And one way to look at that is to use the big constants. And the big function of balanced blends, and by balanced blend I mean the, the, group, the grades, the group of the Taylor coefficients on either end are the same, so we have m and m, not m and n, where it was dif different. Um, then you have, here, just look at uh, uh, a few of them. These are for Fibonacci degree, uh, Fibonacci number grades. So this is exponentially increasing grades. And we see that it's just, it's fine. Um, the mathematics, you can anal analyze the, these things analytically and show that uh, the growth in the middle uh, is 2 root n over pi. And that's worse than Chebyshev nodes, but it's not that bad. Uh, for n equals 1,000, it's about 30. And, well, <laughs> uh, so the, the best would be about 14, but 30 is decent. So, uh, but we actually work on 0 to 1, not on minus 1 to 1. That was the result on minus 1 to 1. So you could compare it with other things that we normally think about. It. That's the natural way to think about it. But we're really working on 0 to 1. And on 0 to 1, the Lebesgue constant is 2 for all balanced blends of all, of all degrees. And in fact, uh, it's asymptotic to 2 minus 2 over root pi m. So it, it's, it's fine. Bernstein polynomial bases are better with Lebesgue constant 1, but 2 is good. I'm not unhappy with that at all. And I do want to tell you the details of the proof, because the proof is really pretty. Um, you first look at the difference between the mth Lebesgue function and the m minus first. The big function, and you compute a few of those things, and you look at these numbers that come out in front of the thing, and they're all of the form uh, s to the m times 1 minus s to the m multiplied by a constant. You look at those first, first three constants and you type them into the online encyclopedia of, of integer sequences that says, hey, those are Catalan numbers. And you go, oh, maybe I can prove that, and you can't. You use a contour integral when you prove it. And then if the differences are known, then you can write LMM of S as a, as a sum. And that's a truncation of the ordinary generating function for Catalan numbers, and it tells you everything you want to know. But if you uh, don't keep the degrees the same on either end, if you let one of them have vastly more information than the other, then you're in trouble. You can have, you know, two-thirds of the information on one side and one-third on the other side, and that seems to be okay. But if you've got almost all the information on one side and almost nothing on the other, you can get exponentially growing the big functions. And here's just a, uh, I just computed the, the big functions for um, the total grade being 30, and I just uh, chose, you know, a 1 and 29 and 0 and uh, pardon me, 1 and 29, 2 and 28, 3 and 27, and so on. And you can see that, that the, the worst ones really uh, are uh, uh, horrible. You can prove that the growth is exponential. But as I say, if you're about one third and two thirds, it's just fine. So here's an, uh, a function which is not analytic. This function is um, one and all its uh, uh, derivatives are zero at the left end, and it's minus one and all its derivatives are zero at the right end. So there's no analytic function that does that 
when you have infinite series there. But if you just plug those things in, you get a wonderfully smooth polynomial that goes from one side to the other without any difficulty at all. Great, those are the individual pieces. So a string of blends, well, you know, if you have information at nodes, or sometimes people call them knots, well, okay, then strings become a reasonable thing to, to, to use here. So we have um, a blend string is a set of the form uh, collection of these LK. So what's the LK? An LK is a point, uh, an alpha K, and then a whole bunch of Taylor series coefficients for the function at that point. And two blend strings are compatible if they have the same knots in the same order and the same degrees at each knot, then you can add them together. You can uh, multiply them together. You can uh, divide them if the one you're dividing by is not zero, uh, or even take them to a power, or possibly compose them. In that case, it would just be an, an, an approximate computation. I mean, normally, you would want to truncate the things anyway. We can, when you're multiplying together, you would use Cauchy product and cut it off at the, the same grade rather than uh, take of the higher grades. So you can have the nodes wandering around in the complex plane. You don't have to have things in a straight line. Probably mostly useful in a straight line, but anyway, there you go. Um, on the line segment between any two knots, you use the formula from Hermit or the, the uh, double Horner implementation of that to evaluate the polynomial uh, in between those two knots. And at each knot, you have only one set of Taylor, Taylor coefficients. So you can see the Taylor coefficient information is being shared on adjacent intervals. And so you wind up with a very smooth approximate. And you can choose them, typically, in applications. If you want something that's three times differentiable, well, then choose m equals three. If you want it uh, 50 times differentiable, then choose m equals 50. Quadrature. Quadrature is remarkably easy. There's a five-line maple proof of this formula equation nine. Um, Abreshkov, in 1940, had this formula. I'm fairly sure that Hermit must have taught it. Uh, I can't find it in his writings, but they're pretty voluminous, but it's the kind of thing that he must have known, or Darbu or Gauss. Uh, John Butcher thinks that Gauss probably did. But what it is, it says, if you take the Taylor coefficients at one end and the other end, you have these simple coefficients, add them all up, and you're done. And it's an exact integral of the blend, and therefore a good approximation to the integral of the underlying function. Uh, that's integrating a blend. So how do you integrate a blend string? Well, you do it from the first piece and you have that integral up to there and you use that information in the next piece and so on. Uh, because integrating all the way across a blend gives you uh, a new blend for the integral, the indefinite integral across, the, across that one line. And this just propagates all the way and it's very straightforward. You don't have to, again, you don't have to use binomial coefficients. You can uh, generate these uh, coefficients recursively, and you can see this way that the, the, each of the CJs decays mono, monotonically, and the DJs alternate in sign, but they decay monotonically as well. And typically, uh, since M is equal to N, then the absolute value of the DJs is the same as the CJs, and the formula just becomes uh, a very straightforward thing that reminiscent of the uh, Euler Maclaurin sum formula, but it's different. It's a different formula. Uh, beautifully stable, again, accurate using uh, to, to uh, uh, just a linear number of flops, uh, rounding, rounding errors. It's not very accurate if M and N are greatly different. The, uh, the underlying Lebesgue function it get, grows exponentially if, if the uh, M and N are vastly different. Uh, but if M is approximately N, it's Wonderful. Differentiation, well, differentiating uh, Horner uh, rule is very straightforward and you can do the same with this stuff. So we, right, we actually built in uh, arbitrary differential de derivatives into the code and I call that semi-automatic differentiation because it wasn't you know, program differentiation, no code did that, I did that. 
anyway, it's fine. And again, the error is really good because you are uh, approximated derivative with a, with its polynomial to polynomial uh, differentiation. So that uh, the error in that is actually bounded. It's not unbounded. For root finding, uh, there's a companion pencil for Hermite and Turbulence, and its eigenvalues are the, the roots of the polynomial expressed by the blend. So you give me a blend, I can write down a, a companion matrix for it and use ordinary eigenvalue software. Now, here the binomial coefficients bite. Uh, the, if you have something larger than 30 by 30 on here, it's not, in a, not a good method. It's, uh, I'll show you the, here's a, an example matrix and you can see the binomial coefficient showing up. So if m equals two, so we have Taylor coefficients up to the second derivative at the left end and up to the second derivative at the right end, then the following matrix uh, has these little Jordan blocks, has two Jordan blocks with lambda minus one and minus ones in there and lambda, lambda minus zero and minus one uh, on the subdiagonal in there, but it's too broken up. And then otherwise it's an arrowhead-like uh, matrix. And you see the binomial coefficients appearing in the, in the column. And this is fine for fairly low degrees, but yeah, above 30, it's not very good. Here, in, if n equals 21 and n equals 13, with that wonderfully flat function I was talking about last time, uh, one and all derivative zero at the left and minus one and all derivative zero at the right, then you compute the zeros and you can actually see uh, uh, that it gets the zero on the interval quite well, but you can also see that uh, limits of convergence of the um, uh, Hermite interpolational polynomial are, tells you, it's the gentius there, the, right, the, the, the uh, zeros of the approximate tell you uh, when things start to go wonky. All right, in summary, with blend strings, we can approximate smooth functions on an interval in a perfectly stable, decently conditioned, and nearly spectrally efficient manner. Maybe it's actually spectral, I don't know. Uh, you can combine functions very efficiently. You can differentiate and integrate the functions and find zeros. You can solve differential equations, much like Teb fun and, and approx fun. One can do a lot of symbolic computation, a kind of symbolic computation with smooth functions, and sometimes much more rapidly than one can do exact computation. And maybe this makes uh, the exact computation unnecessary. All right, where next? I want to add Laurent series, Puiseau series. I want to add two-sided bend strings so it can allow for jump discontinuities, which shouldn't bother us too much. Uh, approximate composition I mentioned. I promised to try to solve delay differential equations. That should be a simple job. <laughs> Tim Daly says, nope, no such thing as a simple job, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, root finding. And I said that the degree 30 isn't great, so maybe what's, what's the best method? Maybe I should add further subdivision to do that in the way that uh, John Boyd and Nick Trefethen did for uh, Chedpon. Where next for Nick? Well, we all wish him a happy and productive retirement. Thank you for listening.